Hello and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Now I am in what I have earmarked as the future woodland garden. But before I start creating a garden, I've got to get rid of this hot mess. Invasive vines, yet again. I hate them, they are the bane of my life. It's like history repeating itself. A few months ago, I had to remove six invasive vines that had been 20 years growing on the fence between my neighbor's house and my house. And now I'm faced with the same problem here. But this time it's only ivy. Now, somewhere underneath this, there is in actual fact a granite wall, which should be about three foot high, and on top of it should be a chain link fence. Now, in order to get rid of all of this, I'm going to have to not trim it back, hack it back, which is a hedge trimmer, and try and find at the base how many trunks or ivy trunks there are, because I need to apply a stump killer, and to do that, I have to be able to find the stump first. So, got my glasses on, got my hedge trimmer in hand, and let's get started and see if I can find something under this. Well, as you can see, here is one of the trunks. Well, several trunks together. But unfortunately, it's going to be a lot more difficult than I had anticipated because these are rooted everywhere. These tiny little shoots are coming up all over the place. So I'm just going to wonder how long it's going to take if I cut this down and apply stump killer to get through to every single one of these. So I suppose when I apply the stump killer, it's going to kill the majority, but I think I'm going to have to keep a very close eye on this over the following year to pull up any strays, the ones that got away. Right, now I've just finished hacking back so I can see exactly what's going on underneath. So right from the actual entrance, right as far as the neighbour's garden down there. Uh, first impressions, there seems to be something over the chain link fence, if I can get in here, here. You can see, this is what they call here bretho, it's a type of screening made up of uh, literally bunches of bretho, which is heather, bound together by little wires with about a four inch separation. So it was obviously first put up as some sort of screen and then they let the ivy grow up and unfortunately through it which makes uh, removing it a little bit more difficult than I had anticipated. The other thing I'm seeing is that uh, the original planting of the ivy seemed to have every three foot a major plant and then of course it's just run amok, totally run amok over the years. Uh, apart from the big big trunks you've got all of these minor ones that have grown up and then hundreds and hundreds of these smaller ones. They are all over the place. So getting rid of it is going to be a bit of a bummer, I'm afraid. And I can see instead of removing the stump, it's going to have to trench it and remove as much as we can. The very important thing here is stump and vine killer to, to get rid of as much as possible forever. So what I'm going to do now, because it's beginning to heat up the day, I'm going to leave this now. This evening, I'm going to come and clear up and bag all of this mess because I always like to clean up as I go. I don't like working in a mess. And then tomorrow, I'm going to get all my gear on for using the stump killer, the stump and vine killer, and then start cutting and painting and cutting and painting. So, hasta mañana. Okay, so here we are at day number two. And this is where I start cutting the base and then applying the stump killer. Now, I just turn the camera around. I've got my kneeling pad and then down here, I've got my loppers and I've got my mini chainsaw and of course my normal gloves to get this part out of the way, which is just cutting it all back. So then I go to phase two. Phase two, obviously you're going to need your brush and stump killer. I use Fertilone because it's the one I can get over in this country fairly easily. Then you need a paintbrush, which can only be used for this and for nothing else. And of course, waterproof gloves. Now, as you see here, I've made two cuts. I could only make one cut, but it makes painting a lot more difficult. So I cut it below where I want to paint, and I just give a little snip above to leave me room to be able to apply the stump and vine killer, or stump and brush killer, however you want to call it. 
So then what I do is come in with the secateurs just to give these little flimsy little ones a fresh cut. See, these are all in the ground. And I can apply it to these freshly cut mini vines. Let's keep going. Now ivy stumps are quite soft so a lot of them you're able to cut just with the loppers and even with the secateurs but obviously these big ones know. Now see how that part will move? If I try to cut above it'll start moving and flexing under the saw. This part is still anchored into the ground so we're going to make our second cut here. There we go, perfect surface for painting. Now this second one, it's a little bit close to the wall here. So what I'm going to do is make the cut up here. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference where you cut as long as you have a nice flat surface for painting. So let's get this cut up here. And we'll cut this one while we are at it. There we go, another two nice flat surfaces. So here we've got three, and indeed four nice flat surfaces. Right, this is basic common sense. You're working with poison, it's a potent poison, and therefore you just got to be careful. You always put yourself in the worst case scenario. So you gotta shake it. If you want to shake it, don't put it towards your face. You give it a shake, but always away from your face, just give it a little bit of a shake. And then it's got a safety top on. Obviously, I've got waterproof gloves on. Squeeze it in, push it down, and unscrew it. Now, what I usually do is I have my little trug here, I keep it in there, because this will kill anything it comes in contact with. And remember, there's a lot of roots here, not only the ivy roots. So I want to apply it to the actual stump and nothing else. But should there be an accidental spill, it gets within a little trug. So, little paintbrush. In we go. And we're just going to paint these flat surfaces. And all you do is keep going the full length of the garden. To move to another clump, so just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to close it and move to the next clump. Now this is the fence where I removed a few months ago the invasive vine, the six invasive vines that have been growing for 20 years. And I applied again stump and vine killer. As you can see, it's very, very clean. There are, however, just occasionally, if I get down here, this is just a bit of honeysuckle wanting to come up again, so you might just hand pull it. Or if it's a little more serious, you can reapply to that particular plant uh, some more stump and vine killer. But in general, it is pretty good, the results. I can see another one there. Ah, no, that's not a vine. It's just some of these clover-like weeds. That's fine. So in general, the result is excellent. Hopefully down at the bottom of the garden where I've just been working is going to be the same. Well, that's that part on. All I've got to do now is remove the gloves. Again, I haven't splashed anything on my hands, but just in case you remove as you would any sort of contaminated glove, take it on this side and peel it off. And then on this side, cover it. And that way you never touch your skin. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As you can see, the first phase is now done. It'll need about four to six weeks to do its job underneath the ground. And what I need to do now while that's being done, while that's doing its job, is gradually start peeling away all of this hedge of ivy. That's a big job and I'm not looking forward to it, especially in this heat, but it's got to be done because I think about the last week in August or the first week in September is when they want to come and actually put up this fence. So it has to be done by then. So I'm going to take it bit by bit when I can, when it's cooler and get the job done. One thing before I do go, 
Remember, this is a stump and vine, or stump and brush, whatever you want to call it, killer. What you never use it on is water sprouts. If you've got a tree that you love and it's got water sprouts on it, you do not put this on it. Because if you put it on a water sprout on a tree that you want to keep, that tree is going to die. So, no, it is a killer. Only for vines and stumps you want to get rid of forever dead. Well, thank you, as always, very, very much for watching. And I'll see you here in Granny's Garden next week. Bye-bye now.